Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Sana Alejandra Rodriguez. Thank you for viewing, watching another video for the Latinx and Kille blog, where we get to talk about uh, the 25th anniversary of the Pura Belpre Awards. I'm joined by... I'm Dora Guzman. I am here again with Sonia. We're talking children's literature again. And this time we picked the 2015 Pura Belpre Illustration Award winner, um, Drum Dream Girls, How One Girl's Courage Changed Music, written by Margarita Engels and illustrated by Rafael Lopez. Um, it also won other awards, like the 2016 Charlotte Solito Award for picture books, and then it won a picture book honor for the 2015 um, Asian Pacific American Award. Awesome. Thanks so much for suggesting this book, and I'm so excited to, to be able to have a conversation. I love Lopez's art and i am a fan of angles just poetry so i feel like they're my two faves come together i really like it yeah yeah her novels in verse i am always just like so into all of her books that are coming out and i think they're even coming out with a recent one right that you yeah know. in the fall oh, time what is time top fall 2021 on the statue of liberty so i'm super excited light for us okay. life for all of us I'm super excited for that collaboration again. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like what Drum Dream Girl is about? Yeah, so Drum Dream Girl is a based on a real, um, it's like the biography of, based on um, a woman who actually became, you know, part of a music band. Right. And so it's about this little girl, essentially, before we dive into the actual like real life events. It's about a little girl who, you know, she looks around for setting and I think the setting is in Cuba, but I can't be mistaken. Um, and so she really just wants to play the drums. Right. She listens to the drums. She looks at her surroundings and but she's constantly told no. She's told no by the people around her. And then she's also told no, um, you know, she's. She really wants to play the drums, so she starts playing the drums, but then her father says no, you know, that drums can only be played by boys. Um, so it's it's her taking this courage, right, as as a girl to really just um, follow her passion and follow where where her heart really guides her, right? And she wants to play the drum, and not just for music per se, but also she loves the way it sounds, right? Um, it's like her her purpose there. Um, and then eventually, obviously, spoiler alert, she does get to, um, her father finally, you know, gets her a music teacher, and she does follow her dreams to play the drums, she, start play, she starts playing in cafes, and then eventually she joins a band. Yeah, thank you for that. That's an awesome uh, summary. So just going back to, like, it, it's based on a real person, right, in the 1930s, and this is from, like, the historical note, right, that uh, Angle provides for us. Right, so it's about a Chinese African Cuban girl, right, um, who broke, or just say, broke traditional taboo for female drummers, uh, Milo Castro uh, Saldiar. I knew I was gonna mess that up. I'm sorry, Milo Castro Saldariaga, um, based on right their real life story and about becoming the first uh, drummer girl in an all woman band, because as you mentioned. Right, drumming was just for women. It was not for women. It was just for boys, right? And there's a clear like moment of that in the book where the dad's like, "No, it's you can't. You're not a boy." And then the dad changes their mind, and it's like, "Okay, <laughs> you can do it." Yeah, I really love that whole part. And like throughout, like I feel like the majority of the picture book was her like her own self reflection, right? And it was her own thinking of, you know, what playing the drums meant to her um and then the second half of the book is more so like again breaking breaking those norms right and saying no I, I can play the drums too um so yeah so okay. much there's so many moments of her um or of of like Margarita Engel putting um dreams like that this has to be kept a dream Right, that because of the, the gender politics, right, the oppression, the time period, that this young girl has to keep this, I mean, she has musical talent, <laughs> this musical talent 
um, a dream because of, of these uh, of these gender politics. And so, so many of the scenes uh, in the book, right, are are her um, the character hearing the music all around her, like even in her, and just kind of imagining what that is, right? And and I think we hear that we hear that the the drum, right, in the words as well as you're reading. Yeah, it's very rhythmic. It has like, you know, very, very much um, not only metaphors, but it has alliteration, right, which in its sense, right, creates a rhythm stance. Um, and I listened to this in Spanish and it's, it's just the same, right? The translations were very authentic and also created like this rhythm, right? Of not only, I mean, Margarita Engel is a poet, so of course she's going to have, you know, this this expertise in language and how to use it. Um, but in a sense, um, she brings it down for younger readers too and older. This is one of probably one of my favorite illustrations when you talked about dreams. Yeah, that's the one I was looking too. at. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I got a sense of very much like her ancestors, right? Of her like kind of, yeah. I don't know, I just got some of those vibes too. Yeah, so, well, two things that are coming to mind, right, as you're talking about this image, right, so much of, like, uh, Rafael Lopez's art in this book is about bringing, like, the young girl's dreams to life, right, so, like a visual representation of these dreams, right, and as you were mentioning, I mean, this is a perfect example, right, she's laying down, right, and there's this, like, visual representation of her dream, but then we also get, like, that musicality um, of poetry, particularly in this page, and I'm going to read it real quick. So the drum dream girl had to keep dreaming, quiet, secret, drumbeat dreams, right? So the alliter uh, alliteration, right, is there um, and is very on beat like a drum would be, right? And so I, I love that um, collaboration that happened there right, between the words and the images. Um, and just like the, the topic of the book, right, it's about drums, about this younger wanting to, to play the drums. And so it makes sense that the words and the images need to have like a rhythm, like a beat to them. Yeah, yeah. It works awesome. very well together. Yeah, and um, when I was looking for the Spanish version of this book, which is um, titled Una Niña, Un Tambor, Un Sueño, um, I had a hard time finding it. So it might have been just publishing, right, during the pandemic. But my first grade bilingual teachers use this as a read aloud for one of their units when they're looking at character analysis, right? So they not only start looking at who is the character, right, just the physical traits, but also more of those internal traits, right? Obviously, courage is yeah. one of them, but it's very interesting to hear even from a perspective of a six and seven year old of what they think, right, the, the little girl, um, has in terms of like traits of course they say like brave um some of them say like artistic and that might be again that connection to like music right because they they learn that she is a musician um so yeah just the way for those younger readers they even get the sense of this whole the whole um theme of the book as well yeah definitely i teach i teach um college students and i I teach my children's literature class is themed around like lib, uh, rebellion and liberation, right? It's very broadly <laughs> books on like children like rebelling, right, and fighting for liberation. And this very much when I when I show it to my students, right, like that theme of of needing to rebel against society, against your family, right, um, and then the dad, right, the family, but also represents like patriarchy, right? It's the young girl's like encounter with patriarchy, like direct encounter. Um, and so needing to, as a child, needing to be like, okay, well, that's not the world I want to live in. And so I need to find um, alternatives or I need to not give up, right? There's a lot of persistence. We're talking about character traits, right? Uh, perseverance, uh, not, not giving up because they could have easily just been like, okay, I can't do it because I'm a girl, right? But, but they didn't, right? So here they are. <laughs> and it's even just like rebellion in her own way, right? Like she she she's I feel like she's very insightful as a child right and she she's very observant um and so she looks around her and I feel like um you know being into the arts that that just comes more naturally right just being very observant of the time 
And she's very reflective of, again, like you mentioned, that courage and that rebellion, right? She, she keeps dreaming, right? And she keeps wanting to play. Um, and I feel like as a child, that's, I love those themes, right? That you're still true to yourself. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, definitely. in a sense, is a rebellion, right? Against the patriarchy. Even though you can't, you know, change policies, you can still hold it. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true, right? Because she's not rebelling in the sense of, like, uh, we don't see a scene where she's, like, standing up to her dad. We don't see a scene where she's, like, I'm going to go out into the streets and protest or I'm going to be vocal about it. But so much of her rebellion and resistance is represented in the dreams, right, that uh, Rafael Lopez visually represents uh, for us in this book, which I think is is just as powerful, right? Um, yeah just as powerful as like not giving up in your own dreams or continuing to dream, even if it's like this quiet rebellion, right? It's just a significant mm -hmm. part of, of, of challenging like oppressive norms and ideologies. Mm -hmm. And an image that I think does that for me, and, and uh, maybe you can say a little bit more about it, is one of the, what is this, war vertical? <laughs> one of the vertical <laughs> illustrations. <laughs> Oh, yes. This one stood out to me, one, because I think we, we even talked about how there's a balance between the images that are spanned across horizontally, but then also, you know, vertically. And I mean, I feel like this image in itself, the, the use of wings, right, and how her dreams are essentially captured. And there's so much you can go into analyzing this image, right, and her, and the placement of it, you know, what Rafael decided to add to it, right? It's not just a drum in a cage right um it could to me it represented like this whole this whole sense of music right that because we weren't opening it up to everyone right to be freely playing the drums i feel like we caged the essence of that music right yeah. um so yeah, yeah that was one of my favorite images yeah and it reminds me of my angelou's i know what the cage bird sings Right, mm -hmm. just like the, the visual representation of it, right? Being being trapped, wanting to fly, um, right? And like you said, right, the, the drum representing the um, the bird in flight, right? Wanting to take flight. Um, so yeah, it's such a beautiful representation. Yeah, there's so many like just things with wings and um, even like the, I think these are called end papers, even they have like just, oh, you know, the symbolism of the butterfly and bird. And all throughout you have, you know, the butterflies right by her, right? So just, again, that careful placement of images that, you know, mean freedom as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was thinking about the butterflies too. So I was trying to find like patterns in the illustrations. And the butterfly, right, the butterflies or the birds are like wings are, are images that keep recurring, right? Because you said, right, it's the representation of freedom, of flight, of transformation, right? And so, um, again, and this is what I love about like, like picture books or illustrated books, right? That you have on the one level, right, on a very complicated level, <laughs> the narration, right? Like the written language, but then the illustrations, once you start going deeper into them, looking at all the details, right, you can start seeing... Uh, more and more layers to it. So, so yeah, and I think that's what we found in a lot of our books that we've talked about, right, in terms of, you know, this is the Buddha Bell Prey 25th year, and we're looking at all the illustrations, and um, we can tell why they won these awards for illustrations, right, because they're complex illustrations. They're not just read-alouds that you can just read and set on yeah. the shelf. You really have to give opportunities, especially to, I mean, college students, but also children, right, yeah. and any uh, readers to really look at the illustrations and think about what are you noticing and what does this mean, right? Yeah, definitely. I think what also, what I like about this book is that um, the young girl's desire for, for drums or not being able to play um, because she's, she's a girl doesn't, like, doesn't stop her in terms of, like, she finds drums in her surroundings. Right. There's a moment where she's like, even when I walk, I'm drumming, right? Um, I'm tapping on my table and it's a drum. I'm like I hear it in the rain and the drop in the in the what are they called? Water droplets. Um, and so like there's no taking her dream away. Right? It's, it's all right, around. Her. Right. Yeah, she didn't seem the defeat the I guess like the defeat, right? Or like you mentioned, just the whole the patriarchy of all, it didn't weigh her down 
right? She noticed it all throughout her surroundings. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's so important to, like, as a reminder to children, right, and, and even to adults, right, that if you want it, right, if this is your dream, right, it's going to be everywhere, right? Someone's going to say no, but keep going, right, because it's going to be everywhere. Moving. Yeah, I think what I also appreciate about this book, and we we're talking about how, like, the dad is, um, like, the first encounter to the pipe to patriarchy, right, because he's the one that says no, but it's also the sisters who want to start a band, spoiler alert, right? It's the sisters that want to, to start the band with her, right? So it's not yeah. just, yeah, that's, and that's a beautiful image, right? That it's not just this one young girl going through it by her lonesome and nobody else is experiencing this, right? But it's like this um, communal experience, right? And particularly like a, the women in her family are also experiencing this. Um, so I appreciated that representation as well. Yeah, because she's by herself in most of the images. So that kind of makes it seem like, hey, she's not the only one. I like, I definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love and I just, that. yeah, and I think so much of like, I'm such a fan of Rafael Lopez's work. Um, I love just like the brightness of it, the bright colors. I am a sucker for brightness and, uh, and his illustrations are just so beautiful. Um, so I just like looking at his work and I like looking at the images um, and they're so rhythmic right we talked about how like the words have like ha have movement or rhythm and so much of like the illustrations also try to represent like rhythm right there's there's waves there's curves um, and the, even though they're like still images right you can capture the movement um, which oh, I appreciate sure. in the work yeah yeah yeah, and I think he does a lot of, um, I remember reading, I think he illustrated a book on Tito Puente and Celia Cruz, so I think oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he also illustrates, you know, a lot of books based on, you know, musicians, and yeah, I love just the placement too, and I feel like that's something that's common throughout these award winners as well, is that they just take up the whole space, right, and I it's just like your eyes can't just look in one place, right? You have to look at the whole picture, but then also various parts of it. And then you're just, it's still, even looking at it now, I, I still bring, you know, you're still thinking more and more things, right? More things come to stand out. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Um, I'm so looking forward to their next collaboration. I'm super excited, what is that? Fall 2021 on Statue of Liberty, um, super excited. I just, I also just like sharing like all of Rafael Lopez's like work with my students. So I also feel like it's so like positive. I'm like, we need it. Mm -hmm. It's so bright. You, you can finish this essay because I can include like a little illustration. You can do it. Um, but yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, um, for sure. So Dora, thank you so much for, for joining me um, to talk about a uh, drum dream girl how One Girl's Courage Changed Music. Folks, check it out. Um, there's a really lovely book review um, done by Suhey Lugo on the book, on the Latinx and Kidlit blog. And it includes a, like a YouTube video into Rafael Lopez's studio, which is super cool. It does, I, love, I think we've talked about before how I love seeing illustrators, like their process. And it feels like mm -hmm. magic is happening. I was like, how did you get there? <laughs> this is amazing. Always. Always. Uh, uh, so thank you again. I'm Dr. Sonia Alejandra Rodriguez, accompanied by Dora Guzman. We'll see you next time. Bye.